Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're still with you on today's edition of Cairo Local Time. And of course, as promised earlier today, we have a very interesting and exciting topic uh, under discussion in the studio today. We discuss the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum, the preparations for the uh, grand opening of the Egyptian uh, Grand Museum, that and much more on today's edition. And of course, I'm delighted to be joined this afternoon in the studio by my guests. If it's okay with you, Mr. Mohammed, I'll start ladies first. Mm -hmm. uh, Heba Khairi, a museum curator. Thank you very much, Heba, for joining Thank us. You, nice and Mr. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed. Ahmad Gamel, the archaeologist, thank you so much for joining us thank this afternoon. You. So it's a very big project, it's very exciting, and of course we've uh, recently seen the Egyptian Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, held, holding several meetings with members of the Cabinet, as well as the Supreme uh, Committee that has been formed to organize the inauguration ceremony of the Grand Egyptian Museum, also uh, well known as GEM, I believe yes. you, you <laughs> often call it GEM. Yeah. Yes. Right, so uh, here, but this time I'll start with Mr. Mohammed, if that's yes. okay. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed, of course, uh, Grand Egyptian Museum entails that there will be a grand inauguration and opening ceremony. Tell me a bit more about the committee that has been formed uh, to prepare for this uh, ceremony, opening ceremony of the museum. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for this nice invitation. I hope it will be a useful interview Indeed. for the whole audience. Actually, as far as uh, now, we are so close to achieve our dream, mm -hmm. which is opening our lovely mega project, the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. So now uh, there is a great attention is given mm -hmm. to this project. Uh, by the Egyptian government, mm -hmm. led by uh, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, the Prime Minister. So we have now a main committee which is consisted of 11 ministers and many other organizations uh, will be responsible for the official uh, opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. Also, we have uh, mo um, another committee, an executive committee, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. will be formed soon uh, by a minister, mm -hmm. by the prime minister, by a decision from the prime minister. Mm -hmm. This committee will be responsible for the events which will be uh, uh, done uh, during the integration ceremony itself. Mm -hmm. So the preparation now uh, is undergoing. Uh, everyone in GIM team, GIM team is already uh, prepared themselves very well mm -hmm. to take the responsibility to make this event mm -hmm. uh, at the same level of greatness mm -hmm. uh, as uh, like the, the, project, mm -hmm. the project itself. The project itself, yeah. indeed. Heba, uh, what in your opinion is the importance of the opening ceremony, the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum? How can it be used to really shed light on where Egypt has come in terms of culture, heritage, uh, the tourists, of course, this is a very yes. big deal for Egyptian tourism, yes, a sure. major, major attraction. So tell yes. me, how can this uh, opening ceremony be used in this regard? Okay, I would like to mention at first that GEM is not only a museum. Mm -hmm. It will be a complete cultural complex. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will link the past with the present, with the future. Mm -hmm. And the major target of this mega project is preserving and safeguarding of the tangible and intangible cultural heritage of Egypt. Mm -hmm to guarantee its sustainability and the continuity to the future generation. Mm -hmm. So GEM also will be a cultural center to communicate and link civilizations and cultures mm -hmm. from all over the globe, not only the Egyptian heritage or the Egyptian civilization, mm -hmm. which means by this ceremony that the Grand Egyptian Museum or GEM will provide and deliver a better understanding, a better appreciation, mm -hmm. a better respect for not only the cultural heritage of Egypt, mm -hmm. but for the global heritage as well. Mm -hmm. So as for the impacts, the Grand Egyptian Museum will have a great impact in many fields, mm -hmm. social, mm -hmm. cultural, economic, mm -hmm. and tourism. As for the social and cultural impact, mm -hmm. the Grand Egyptian Museum will raise the awareness about the importance of the Egyptian heritage, mm -hmm. the importance of preservation of the Egyptian heritage. It will deepen our, you know, our communication and our uh, belonging to Egypt. Mm -hmm. As for cultural, cultural impact, the Grand Egyptian Museum will be a cultural and educational institution. Mm -hmm. It will provide a new opportunities for research regarding the, ar the Egyptology mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. As for the economic, the, this mega project will provide thousands of new job opportunities mm -hmm. for the Egyptian youth. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, uh, a very important that it's not just about yes. opening a, a new museum to display yeah. Egypt's riches, yeah. but it is a multifaceted project. It's yes. about providing job yes. opportunities, educational yes. uh, opportunities uh, for the tourists, mm -hmm. for Egyptians themselves. 
uh, I believe the excitement is very high regarding the very preparations. Yes. Yes. Uh, and of course, it's uh, beautifully situated right next to the pyramids, the development of the whole area, really, of the Giza Plateau, Mr. Mohammed. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the importance of this um, yeah. to allow accessibility, to allow mm -hmm. the visitor, whether it's an Egyptian or a tourist, to yeah. have a, a pleasant stay, yeah. uh, whether it's at the pyramids, uh, the walkway between the pyramids and the museum. This is mm -hmm. all a, a multifaceted project. It's not just yes. about going to the pyramids, then going to the museum, sure. and we're done. You can spend sure. a day or two or three days yes. even sure. in the area. Yes. So yes. tell us sure. a bit more about that. Mr. Actually, uh, the manifestation or the manifest design of the Grand Egyptian Museum mm -hmm. was planned to link the new museum with the Giza Plateau pyramids. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So uh, there was a necessity to give an attention to the surrounding area mm -hmm. uh, and to make some development projects, uh, especially between the area, uh, in the area between the museum, the new museum, and uh, the three pyramids of Giza. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can I say? Yes, uh, the total area, or the whole area, mm -hmm. will, is going to be changing completely. Mm -hmm. It will be changed to be a complete cultural city mm -hmm. uh, equipped with many uh, the, uh, services, tourism services, cultural services like uh, hotels, uh, parks, walkways, uh, restaurants, uh, and of course uh, it will be um, a great experience, mm -hmm. visitor experience, mm -hmm. will be given to the Egyptian visitors, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and to our uh, lovely foreigner visitors. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so uh, this will be uh, the plans mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. inshallah of course the two most, most important landmarks will be the three pyramids of Giza and mm -hmm. our fourth pyramid of Egypt which is the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, Heba, just driving past uh, the location, it's very attractive just to look at it, the design yes. uh, of the building. And this has all taken a lot of uh, research. It, it hasn't happened haphazardly. And we were speaking before, Air, you said the plans were in place years ago. Let's talk about the speed of the implementation. What does this mean? As you said, this project not just affects tourists or mm -hmm. tourism, but it affects the Egyptian economy. It That's affects true. an yes. opportunity for job creation. I mean, how many thousand workers are working right now to build yes, this complex? Yes, uh, they are about uh, more than 6,000 workers working on site. Mm -hmm. Yes, site, yeah. uh, they vary between workers, engineers, archaeologists, mm -hmm. researchers uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the structure itself, this giant structure, mm -hmm. it considered an architectural new masterpiece mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a very gigantic yes. structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, it all of the structure element had been done by Egyptian hands. Mm -hmm. So what is interesting about the structure itself? The structure from inside will include a very ancient civilization, mm -hmm. a very ancient. Uh, art of works, a very ancient artifact, mm -hmm. but the building itself is a very modern, modern. building, mm -hmm. which means that we want to deliver this message to all o to, to the globe that mm -hmm. we are the owners of the most ancient civilization around the world, mm -hmm. but we are thinking with a modern way. We are working to develop ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are working to preserve and safeguard our heritage. Mm -hmm. We are working to deepen our appreciation and our belonging to, to our country and our heritage. Mm -hmm. So as for the current situation for the building itself, mm -hmm. the structure is, uh, ab is about 92.5% okay. completed. Mm -hmm. The facade of the building itself is about 80% uh, completed. Mm -hmm. The building from inside is almost done. As for the collection and the artifacts, mm. now the, uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum Conservation Center, or known as GEMCC, mm. uh, uh, includes about uh, 48,000 pieces of artifact. Conservation work had been done for 45,000 artifacts. Mm -hmm. About 5,100 pieces of the treasury collection of King Tut Anh mm -hmm. had been transported from Cairo Egyptian Museum and Luxor Museum to the Grand Egyptian Museum Conservation Center. Mm -hmm, indeed. Yes. Which leads me to my next question to you, Mr. Mohammed: the importance of displaying uh, the boy king's full uh, treasures. I mean, this yes. is yes. really amazing. And I believe a lot of the pieces have traveled to s lots of museums worldwide, and yep. they will all mm -hmm. uh, be returned in time for uh, mm -hmm. the opening of the museum. Tell me about this treasure. What makes it so special? Yeah. This will be the first time mm. uh, since the discovery of the tomb by Howard Carter at mm. 1922 mm. at the Valley of the Kings at Luxor. 
to uh, display the full collection mm. under one roof in two mega galleries in the Grand Egyptian Museum. The previous uh, situation uh, at the Cairo Museum in Tahrir was to dis uh, display just only mm. 2,000 artifacts mm. uh, from total more than 5,000 artifacts. Mm -hmm. And the remaining of the collection were stored in the magazines of the museum in Tahrir. Mm -hmm. And a few of them were distributed in some museums like the Military Museum in the Citadel mm -hmm. and Luxor Museum. Mm -hmm. But now we will receive and we will embrace mm -hmm. the full collection of this golden pharaoh. Mm -hmm. uh, we will present it in a thematic scenario using the latest modern technology in the museum display, using the multimedia, graphic, interactive methods to give a, vist, uh, a complete or different visitor experience to our visitor. Mm -hmm. uh, our scenario is planned to unlock the secrets of everlasting existence of this king, mm -hmm. who will give a new information, will uh, tell the visitor a new topics about the life of this golden pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be completely uh, mm -hmm. uh, a new uh, visitor experience. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that the previous situation in Tahrir uh, is to present these 2,000 artifacts mm -hmm. in just a space about 700 meters. Mm -hmm. But now in Gem, we mm -hmm. will uh, display f more than 5,000 artifacts mm -hmm. in a space which has about 7,500 meters, wow. 500 so meters. 10 times So much, 10 yes. times, yeah. And, and more importantly, as you said, the way that it will be presented. This is also very important yeah, yeah. in a scenario, in a story. That's when brilliant. I walk in, I will know this piece came from where, why, what it sure, does. Sure. I understand. It's beautiful sure. to look at artifacts and antiquities, but sometimes you don't know sure. what this was or no. what it was used for, where yeah. it came from. So th there needs to be a sequence. Of course, uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. for of the course. visitor to understand and what this is. this is what we put in our consideration mm -hmm. and uh, Thank you to the curators uh, and uh, our designer who uh, is working on this. Mm. Uh, really, the scenario will give you a fully uh, informative uh, yes. information about this golden pharaoh mm. uh, will be presented uh, in the f for the first time. Mm -hmm. yes. You said 5,000 pieces are going to be on show, uh, but in... More than 5,000. More, th more yeah. than 5,000, <laughs> all right. Uh, yes. But all in all, the, the museum itself is going to uh, show 100,000 pieces. Yeah. So sure. this is a huge amount of artifacts. Yeah. Tell me what, what stands out in, of course you're not going to tell me everything in the 100,000 <laughs> pieces, we don't have time, but no. uh, what other uh, artifacts are key or are yeah. important in your opinion? We have uh, four galleries mm -hmm. uh, starting from the time of the prehistory of Egypt until the time of the Greek Roman uh, period mm -hmm. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Of course uh, we will embrace uh, uh, some rare collection will be presented for the first time and mm -hmm. they used to be stored in some magazines and everywhere in Egypt and mm -hmm. some other museum. Mm. Uh, I think uh, one of the most important collection in my point of view mm. is uh, Tal al-Farkhas collection from the pre-dynastic period. Mm. Also we have uh, the uh, collection of Queen Hatib Harris. Mm. By the way, Queen Hatib Harris is the mother of King Khufu. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also we have marvelous collections from Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom. Yes. We have uh, a very unique uh, collection Connections. from third intermediate period which is Babel uh, Jesus mm. and mm. Uh, Dandaras collections. All of these collections will be presented in a space, mega space, which is 18,000 uh, square meters. Mm -hmm. uh, also using uh, a very good scenario, giving a lot of information about our great civilizations like mm -hmm. the kingship, society, beliefs, mm -hmm. using also the same uh, high technology which is used in Toots Gallery mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, different methods like mm -hmm. the graphic panels, uh, multimedia touch screens, mm -hmm. interactive methods mm -hmm. with the visitor. So of course, uh, this will be also another great experience for okay. our visitors. So but when I come to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum, by the time I leave it, mm -hmm. uh, I should know very much a lot about Egyptian history, not just about the beautiful pieces, but the stories. Yes, who sure. was related to who, who was whose mom, who was yes. the queen, who was the king. Yeah. Um, how important is this for the cultural development side, in yes. your opinion, to come out with a holistic uh, infor informative experience mm -hmm. inside the museum? Yes, uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum will play a very important role as a cultural and education, educational institution. Mm. So this, the, the, our role at this time to provide a kind of interactive uh, educational and cultural programs mm -hmm. and activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the aim behind this kind of educational programs mm -hmm. is to raise the awareness mm -hmm. about the history mm. of ancient of this ancient civilization mm. okay the importance of preserving and guarantee the continuity of this heritage for the generation not only for the international visitor mm. or uh, 
the national vest, but for both of them and for the globe as it's, it's considered uh, global heritage. Mm -hmm. So we will work to uh, to provide this kind of program, to provide this kind of narratives or behind the stories, mm -hmm. uh, telling the story about every artifact, mm -hmm. the you know the conception or mm -hmm. the aspect behind every artifact. Mm -hmm. As well, we will shedding the light on the intangible cultural heritage of the ancient Egyptian. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, their social practice, yes. their daily life mm -hmm. system. Their traditions and Yes, this cost, their mm -hmm. costume, their mm -hmm. handicraft. Mm -hmm. Already, the Grand Egyptian Museum will include a handicraft center, mm -hmm. an educational center, and children museum center. Mm -hmm. So the purpose The children museum center, I'd like to stop at that. This is quite an interesting approach. Yes. Because uh, often museums are not really a place for children. It's mm. more adults and grown-ups yes. that would enjoy a visit to the museum. If I tell my son, let's go to the museum, <laughs> I don't think he'll be, you know, very yes, keen. interested. Yes, yes, but tell me what makes this children museum uh, attractive for kids. Yes, uh, the Children's Museum is considered a museum inside the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, will, they will focus about the children from three years old mm -hmm. to the 12 years old. Mm -hmm. As well, the Children's Museum is provided with uh, educational classes mm -hmm. uh, where we will provide these educational classes using our artifacts or our ancient artifacts. Mm -hmm. It will not be just education. I will uh, teach them the alphabets mm -hmm. of uh, ABC mm -hmm. and this kind of things. Mm -hmm. No, I will teach them what is their history, mm -hmm. okay? So who are our ancestors? Mm -hmm. How can we now uh, revive this glory of mm -hmm. our ancestors? Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, the, you know, the point behind the Children mm -hmm. Museum. Mm -hmm. We want to the children to interact and to involve directly mm -hmm. with their history, mm -hmm. with their heritage. In a fun so and interactive way. Yes, with not in a way yes. where we're We will use the virtual reality. Mm -hmm. We will use the latest update methods and technologies mm -hmm. used in international museums outside mm -hmm. Egypt mm -hmm. for regarding the museum education mm -hmm. to, uh, as I said, to deliver a better understanding and a better appreciation for our heritage or, and for safeguarding our heritage. Indeed. Yes. I'm afraid we're running out of time, so <laughs> I just want to wrap up, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, the inauguration ceremony, of course, uh, there are lots of preparations towards the inauguration ceremony, yeah. towards the opening ceremony. How can we use this time wisely to prepare for such a big event in your opinion and how can we maximize uh, surely the opening ceremony won't just be one day it will be several events and it may be an ongoing month of celebrations yeah. of the grand egyptian museum opening yeah. uh, how do you see this as being achieved in the upcoming period yeah mm -hmm. as i said mm -hmm. in our uh, beginning of the speech mm -hmm. uh, the attention which is given by the government mm -hmm. uh, putting a uh, a uh, great responsibility in our shoulders yes, as a gym staff mm -hmm. uh, yes. to make this event in the same levels of greatness of the project as mm -hmm. I say. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, everyone is working hard really to mm -hmm. get the owner to be part of the team who will be responsible for this great uh, uh, integration mm -hmm. which is uh, planned to be uh, as usual, mm -hmm. a magical mm -hmm. uh, integration, and yes. a magical ceremony, mm -hmm. and uh, to make uh, a present or a gift from the, for the whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, finally, what can I say mm -hmm. that um, after a few thousands of years mm -hmm. now in Giza, uh, the grandchildren of the Pharaoh mm -hmm. uh, are working hardly to restore mm -hmm. the glory of their ancestors, mm -hmm. uh, yes. working hardly to uh, present to the whole world an iconic gift, a miracle. Yeah which is the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. So we will meet you there at 2020, inshallah. Indeed, looking forward to it. And Heba, one final uh, word, especially uh, this uh, project, lots of people come to visit Egypt just for uh, the ancient Egyptian heritage. Yes. I mean, yes. uh, lots of people just come to visit and see Egyptian culture, yes. Egyptian heritage. They're not interested in the sea or diving. They just want this specific experience. Uh, I think from a very young age, lots of children always said the pyramids and the Sphinx. And yes. So how is this project going to change that and make it a much more attractive destination it's no longer coming to visit the pyramids and the sphinx but yes. also the grand egyptian museum yes uh, the grand egyptian museum uh, will give the visitor a uh, very enjoyable uh, experience mm -hmm. for visiting a museum mm -hmm. and it it will do its role to uh, 
you know, to draw the or lighting the image of Egypt internationally mm -hmm. as a cultural hub and as a strong cultural destination. Mm -hmm. So GEM is expected to uh, attract about 5 million tourists to Egypt every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, w I would like to mention something that the Grand Egyptian Museum have a very, very big role with the sustainable development goals of Egypt very 2030, mm -hmm. as it will be a very important tool mm -hmm. for promotion and marketing for the tourism, uh, Egyptian tourism market mm -hmm. uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes. I'm afraid we have run out of time very <laughs> yes. quickly uh, this afternoon, but I'd like to thank my guests very much. Yes, uh, Ms. You. Heba Khairi, the museum curator, thank you very thank much. You. And of course, thank Mr. You. Mohammed Gamel, archaeologist, thank you so much thank for you. joining us this afternoon. And of course, best wishes and looking forward to visiting the event. Yes, very well. yes. Thank you very much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, that's all the time we have for today. So we'll end it at this. Uh, you are in the company of myself, Angie Mehrmini. Thanks for watching.